the natural log function. So we're going to start off by revisiting some of the ideas that we have come across previously about logs. So let's look at a few simple examples. If we start with 2 to the power of x equals p, and we want to rearrange this, we know that x is equal to log to the base 2 of p. So of course, going back to the original statement, this is the base, and using logarithms allows us to find the power. Let's look at a second example. So this time we're going to have 10 to the power of x equals q. So again, 10 is our base. x is the power and q is the value that 10 to the x is equal to. So we know that x is equal to log to the base 10 of q. And of course, log to the base 10 can just be written as log. So we could write x is equal to log q. Now, you've seen this in its generalized format. If a to the power of x equals b, So we have a base a, power x, a to the x being equal to b. Then x is equal to log to the base a of the value b. Here's the base, here's x, and here's b. Now, if we then use the exponential function that we've investigated in the previous lesson. So we say that e to the power of x is equal to some value, we'll call it m. Then we know that x is equal to log to the base of e of m. Because in the original question, e is the base x is the power, and m is the value that e to the x is equal to. But log to the base e can be expressed in a special way, and it is written as ln, a button that you may have seen on your calculator. It stands for natural log, and this is the notation we use. So log to the base e is written as ln, and this statement here we would rewrite as x equals ln of m. Some people like to say ln for shorthand. So in general, log to the base e of a value, let's call it z, is equal to ln of that value z. So having introduced the natural log function, or ln, as we can write it, we know it's just a logarithmic function with a very specific base, so it will follow all of the usual laws of logarithms. So, for instance, we know that if we have ln of x plus ln of y, where x and y are two values, this would equal ln of xy. If we have ln of x subtract ln of y, this would be equal to ln of x over y. And if we have ln of x to the power of a, let's say, we know that this can come down to the front and we have a multiplied by ln x. We know that ln of 1 is equal to 0. 
think about why that's true if we know that e to the power of 0 equals 1. So 0 has got to equal ln of 1, or log to the base e of 1. And we know that ln of e is equal to 1. Again, thinking about the reasoning behind that, e to the 1 simply equals e. So 1 is equal to log to the base e of e, or ln of e. Some people also like to remember that if you have negative ln of x, that is the same as ln or natural log of x to the power of minus 1. Remember, we can bring this up as a power. And of course, x to the minus 1 is 1 over x. This can be deduced very easily, but it's useful to know as well. So all of the usual laws of logarithms are followed by the natural log function, the ln function. Let's have a look at an application of these rules that we've just recapped. So we're going to solve this equation here. Write it down. Let's have a look at each part of it. So we start with a half ln 16, which can be written as ln 16 to the power of a half. We then have plus ln 75, which can remain as it is. And subtract 2 ln 5, which can be written as subtract ln 5 squared. So this and this rewritten as powers. We can then work out each portion of this. 16 to the power of a half is 4. So we have ln 4 plus ln 75 subtract ln 25. We then have these parts which are being added. So we have ln of 4 multiplied by 75, take away ln of 25. And we can then rewrite this as ln of 4 multiplied by 75 over 25, which comes to a value of ln of 12. So ln x equals ln 12, so x has got to equal 12. Let's have a look at another example. We've got to write ln of x cubed plus ln of root x in this format here, k ln x, so it's a single natural logarithm. So we're going to move this 3 to the front, so we have 3 ln x or 3 ln x, and I'll rewrite root x as x to the power of a half. So we have 3 ln x plus a half ln x. And we can simply add these together. We have 3 and a half or 7 over 2 ln of x. So k is equal to 7 over 2. So we're now going to look at solving some equations which involve e to the x and ln of x. But we're going to start off by reminding ourselves of how these two functions connect to each other. So we know that if e to the x is equal to, let's say, p, then x is equal to log to the base e of p, i.e. x is equal to natural log ln of p. Now, what this means is that these two statements are entirely connected to each other. So e to the x equals p is directly connected to the concept that x equals ln of p. And this is because e to the x and ln are inverse functions of each other. If we start with an input and we apply e to the power of that input, so x effectively is our input, we come to some sort of output value. If we then apply ln of x, so ln of the output, we will get back to the input and the other way around. So let's imagine we start with e to the x equals p again. Now we know that that means x equals ln p, but the step that we 
don't really write down is that what we're doing is we're taking ln of both sides of this original equation. So we're taking ln of e to the x and ln of p. Now ln of e to the x simplifies down to give us x. ln of p is of course ln of p. And that's a step we don't always write down because usually we go straight from here to this step here. But this is actually what is taking place. And the same the other way around. If we started with, let's say, ln of x is equal to q, let's say this time, we know that x is equal to e to the power of q. And if you're not sure about that, go back and think about the idea of what we're writing down here, that log to the base e of x is equal to q. So if we want to turn that into a power format again, then we know that x is equal to the base, which is e, to the power q. But again, the step that we don't necessarily see or write down is the fact that both of these sides are being raised to the power of e. So what we actually have is e to the ln x equals e to the q. And e to the ln x simplifies to x because e to the power of and ln are inverse functions of each other. So again, we normally go straight from this step to this step without writing out this middle step, but it is nonetheless hugely valid. So it's worth remembering that ln of e to the power of x gives us x, and e to the power of ln x gives us x as well. So remember that e to the x and ln of x are inverse functions of each other. They are each other's inverse. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit more detail later on. But we were going to focus on having a look at solving some equations that involved e to the x and ln of x. So let's come back to these. We'll start with some simple examples and then we will build up to more complex ones as we go along. So example number one. e to the x is equal to 7. Now, so many different ways of thinking about this. If you want to, you can think about the fact that e to the x equals 7 tells us that x has got to equal log to the base e of 7, which really we should write down as ln of 7. You may just directly write down x equals ln of 7, so you get the same answer. Now, you may wish to think about what we were talking about just previously, which is that we are taking ln of x of both sides. And of course, ln and e cancel each other out. So on the left hand side, we have x. On the right hand side, we have ln of 7. Whichever way you want to think about this, you will get to the same answer. Now, I've included this question because it's very easy for people to go wrong in examples like this. They want to leap straight in to taking logs of both sides here and getting to an answer. But this two here is in the way. So the first step that we really need to make is to divide by the two. So e to the x is equal to 4.5 or 9 over 2. And x is then equal to ln or ln of 9 over 2. We can work that out on our calculator and round it if we want to, but it's quite nice in its exact form as well. Let's build up to a slightly more complex example. And again, we cannot take logs until we have rearranged to a much simpler format. So we need to multiply by 2. So 5e to the x subtract 3 equals 2. Add the 3. 5e to the x is equal to 5. Divide by 5. So e to the x is equal to 1. And then we should just know, really, that x has got to equal 0. So e to the power of 0 equals 1. We can also write down x equals ln of 1. But that's a result that we should know. Now, just as an interesting aside to the 
second question here. If you had written this down, so this is a slightly detailed alternative solution, ln of 2e to the power of x equals ln of 9, you could still work it through correctly if you use your laws of logarithms carefully. We have ln of a product here. So that can be split up to give us ln 2 or ln 2 plus ln of e to the x, which equals ln of 9. Now, we can then rearrange this. ln of e to the x is equal to ln of 9 subtract ln of 2. Now, we know that ln of e to the x results in just x because ln and e are inverse functions of each other. So this left-hand side gives us x. And on the right-hand side, we have ln of a take away ln of b or ln of 9 take away ln of 2, which is ln of 9 over 2. So we get the same result that we got previously, but it's much more complex. It is much easier to rearrange to the form e to the x equals some value first rather than taking the logarithms first, where you could very easily do something incorrectly. From the point where, so question four, a slightly more complex example here, we will do some rearranging. So subtract two, first of all, so negative four e to the x over three equals 10. Then we're going to multiply by the three and divide by the negative four. Of course, we can do that in single steps. So we end up with e to the x equals negative 30 over 4. And then we hit a problem. Now you can try taking ln of negative 30 over 4, but your calculator will tell you that you have an error. This does not have any real solutions. Think about your graph of e to the power of x. It looks like this. So here's y equals e to the power of x, crossing the y-axis at 1. Now, if you want e to the x to equal negative 30 over 4, or negative 7.5, well, that's over here. So you can see there's clearly not going to be any intersections. e to the x cannot be equal to a negative number. So we can say very clearly that e to the x is greater than 0, for all values of x. So question number five, four e to the negative x equals five. We're going to have a look at a couple of different ways of solving this. So first method, divide by four. So we have e to the negative x equals five over four. And then we can straight away take logs of both sides. I'm actually going to write that step in for clarity. So ln of e to the negative x equals ln of 5 fourths. And then on the left hand side, ln and e cancel out, but of course leave us with negative x. And on the right hand side, we still have ln of 5 over 4. So this gives me x equals negative ln of 5 over 4. And if you remember, this negative can be moved up to become the power. And of course, a power of negative 1 means reciprocal. So I could write this answer as len, len of 4 fifths at the end. Check on your calculator if you want to verify this numerically. An alternative way of solving this, and it's quite nice to see alternative methods, is to go back to this step here e to the negative x equals 5 over 4. And remember what a negative power means. This means 1 over e to the x equals 5 over 4. And then we can rearrange this so that e to the x is equal to 4 fifths, and then x is equal to ln of 4 fifths. So an alternative way of rearranging to get the same answer. Question number 6. I'm going to start off by dividing by 2. e to the 2x subtract 3 equals 5 over 2. And now I'm going to take ln of both sides. So that will give me 2x minus 3 on the left-hand side equals ln of 5 over 2. I've missed out the step where we write ln of e to the 2x minus 3 equals ln of 5 over 2. But please write that in if that helps with your understanding. And then rearranging this 
2x is equal to ln 5 over 2 plus 3. x is equal to a half of ln 5 over 2 plus 3 in exact form. So equations that started off with E to begin with, and now let's have a look at equations that start off with ln. So ln of x is equal to 3. So, so many different ways of thinking about this. Some of you may want to think about the fact that this is the same as log to the base e of x, which equals 3. So you know that x is then equal to the base e raised to the power of 3. So x equals e to the power of 3. Some of you may simply want to go straight to the answer, x equals e to the power of 3, just writing it down. And some of you may want to include an intermediate step where you write e to the power of ln x equals e to the power of 3. So both sides are being raised to the power of 3. But we know that e and ln are inverse functions of each other. So the left hand side is simply x and the right hand side e to the power of 3. Again, so we have the same answer. Question number eight, four ln 2x equals five. Straight away, I'm going to divide by four to simplify this very quickly. So ln of 2x equals five over four. Now I included this example because people quite often start to do odd things with the 2x and try and split it up, break it up. There's no need to do that. It's in the format ln of something equals five over four. So we can go straight to the fact that 2x is equal to e to the power of five over four. And again, if you want to write in the step that has e to the ln of 2x equals e to the 5 over 4, you can do. And remember, e and ln directly cancel each other out. So 2x equals e to the power of 5 over 4. x equals a half e to the 5 over 4. So question 9, e to the 2x equals 5e to the power of x. I'm going to rewrite it like this. And then we're going to factorise it. So e to the x outside a bracket and inside my bracket, e to the power of x, because of course, if I multiply these two terms together, I add the indices and it gives me e to the 2x overall. Take away 5. Now, potentially, we could think about two options here. I could write down that e to the x equals 0. We have a product, so one part of the product must equal 0. So e to the x equals 0. But actually, we know that doesn't have any solutions. We've seen previously e to the x has got to be greater than 0. So I'm going to write down that this has no solutions, as e to the x must be greater than 0. And it's the other part of this that gives me the answer I want. e to the x take away 5 equals 0. So e to the x has got to equal 5. So x equals ln of 5. And that's actually the only answer to this question. Let's have a look at the last example in this section. e to the 2x minus e to the x equals 6. Now, you may have spotted, and you may not have spotted, the fact that it this is an equation that can be rewritten and then factorised. So I'm going to rewrite it as e to the 2x minus e to the x minus 6 equals 0. And in fact, this is very much like the equation m squared minus m minus 6 equals 0, which we know factorises as m subtract 3, m add 2 equals 0. And we can use this to help us factorise this equation up here because effectively our m is equal to e to the power of x. So we can rewrite this as e to the x minus 3, e to the x plus 2 equals 0. And do expand that to check that you're happy with that factorization. And from here, either e to the x has got to equal 3 or e to the x is going to equal negative 2. Now we know that this will have no solutions. e to the x has got to be greater than 0. But this result gives us x equals ln of 3. So watch out for quadratic equations. It's not quite a quadratic equation, but 
in disguise. So we're going to briefly look at the links between the different methods for solving these types of exponential equations. And I'm referring back to the sort of exponential equation that you would have solved before you'd even heard of the exponential function e to the power of x. So 5 to the power of 3x equals 100. And we're going to look at three different ways of solving this problem showing you just the sheer versatility of these techniques. And ultimately, as long as you can use them all correctly, it's about being able to solve problems with a good range of techniques and understanding that in some situations, some methods lend themselves a little bit more easily and a little bit more efficiently, but these methods are all accurate. These methods are all valid and correct. So method one, we can simply use base five. Five to the power of... 3x equals 100. So we can straight away write down that 3x is equal to log to the base 5 of 100. x is equal to 1 third log to the base 5 of 100. And you can evaluate that if you need to on your calculator, which can work through different bases. Method 2. We're going to use log to the base 10. So log to the base 10, or log, as it's generally written, of 5 to the power of 3x equals log to the base 10 of 100. Now, we can then simplify this. The 3x here can move out to the front here. So 3x log 5, remember this is all to the base 10, equals log of 100. 3x then equals log of 100 over log 5. And of course, x is then equal to one third of this, log 100 over log 5. And of course, log to the base 10 of 100 is equal to 2. So we could simplify this as 2 over log 5 inside the brackets. Now, method three involves us using the ln function. So I'm going to write ln of 5 to the power of 3x equals ln of 100. Remembering that ln is, works exactly the same way as any logarithmic function, so this 3x can come out to the front. We have 3x ln 5 equals ln 100. And then it's exactly the same rearrangement that we have done previously. 3x is equal to ln of 100 over ln of 5. And x is then equal to one third of this calculation here. Now, do use your calculator to verify that in all three cases, we get exactly the same numerical answer, which is equal to... 0.9537, etc. So 0.954 to 3SF. So compare and contrast the three methods. We used base 5 here. We used log to base 10 here, or just log. And here we used log to base e, or the ln function. Now, you may immediately think that the first method using the base uh, of the original question is the most efficient and the easiest, but it's worth bearing mind, and you will have seen this when you did work on inequalities previously, that actually this method can cause some problems if you're dealing with an inequality, whereas these methods will not cause the same problems if you're actually solving an inequality. We will look at one last example to conclude. We could do this using either method two or method three from the previous question, not method one, because there are two different bases here. But we're going to use natural log ln for both for this question. So ln of three to the power of x plus one is equal to ln of five to the power of two x. So taking natural log of both sides 
Now, using the power rule, we can apply the same simplification to both sides. So x plus 1 multiplied by ln of 3 is equal to 2x multiplied by ln of 5. Now, from here, we want to do a little bit of expansion, first of all. So we have x ln 3 plus ln 3 is equal to 2x ln 5. Now, it would be helpful to collect the terms that involve x on one side. So I'm going to rearrange. So we have ln 3 equals 2x ln 5 subtract x ln 3. And here we have the x term on the right hand side in both parts. Let's factorize on the right hand side. So x brackets 2 ln 5 take away ln 3. And then we are nearly at the final answer ln of 3 divided by the contents of this bracket 2 ln 5 subtract ln 3 is equal to our final answer of x and all simply done using the natural log. So the last thing that we're going to do is go back to the graphs of y equals e to the x and y equals ln of x. By now, the graph of y equals e to the x should be familiar, this red graph here. And I've also included the line y equals x because we know that y equals e to the x and y equals ln of x are inverse functions of each other. And this means that y equals ln of x will be a mirror image or a reflection of y equals e to the x in the line y equals x. And you can see that clearly here. Have a go at sketching these on your graphical calculator. So we can see that y equals e to the x has its y-intercept of 0, 1. Reflect that in the line y equals x. And y equals ln of x has an x-intercept at 1, 0, which of course we know ln 1 is equal to 0. We can see that e to the x is greater than 0 for any value of x. And we can see that ln of x only exists for positive values of x. So it's impossible to take a log of a negative number. It is possible to take a log of a number and get a negative result. And you can see very clearly, for instance, if we worked out ln of 0 0.5, it would give us a negative value. But we cannot input a negative number into the ln calculation. I'm going to finish off by having a look at a problem involving something called continuous compound interest. This is where interest is calculated continuously, which means that the interest is added in small intervals. Now, the formula that we can use for continuous compound interest is given by A equals P E to the R T. Now, what do all these letters mean? A is the amount at time T. P is your initial investment. R is the percentage rate of interest. So, for instance, if you had a 2.3% rate, then R would equal 0 0.023. So you convert to the percentage multiplier. And T is the time which is usually in years. Let's have a look at an example. So we have £10,000, which is invested in a bank which pays an annual interest rate of 4.6%, which is compounded continuously, meaning we're going to use this formula up here. So what is the investment worth after seven years? So after seven years, our investment is worth 10000 our starting amount multiplied by e to the power of 0 0.046 multiplied by the time in years 7. So let's input that into the calculator. This gives a value of 
98.84 dot dot so we'll round that to 13,799 pounds to the nearest pound I do think in a situation like this that there would actually be quite a lot of sense in rounding that to 13,800 pounds now part two how many years will it take for the investment to be worth 15,000 pounds Let's have a look at how we could start this. So we now know the investment is worth £15,000. So we have 15000 equals our initial investment of 10000 multiplied by E to the rate, which is 0 0.046 multiplied by T. And we have to solve this equation. So we're going to start off by dividing 15,000 by 10,000, which gives us 1.5 equals e to the power of 0 0.046 multiplied by t. So that's dividing by 10,000 as a starting point. We're now going to take natural logs of both sides. So we have ln of 1.5 equals 0 0.046t. So ln of 1.5 is equal to 0 0.4054, and that equals 0 0.046t. So let's divide by this 0 0.046 to give us our value of t. And t is then equal to 8.8144, etc. So 8.8 .8 years to one decimal place.